We're here today in Zebulon at St. Clair Red Mule Farm with Shannon Hoffman hey. and Audie Murphy. And my friend Audie Murphy here is a large mammoth donkey. And Shannon is very well versed in these animals and how to take care of them. And she's going to tell us all about donkeys because you never know, one might be in your future. Shannon, <laughs> Thank give, us, you. give us a crash course. Thank you. Well, Audie's a nine year old registered with the North American Saddle Mule Association, or we call it NASMA. So your donkeys come in a variety of sizes. You have your miniature donkeys and your standard size donkeys. And then your um, mammoth donkeys can be called mammoth donkeys once they reach 56 inches for the males and 54 inches for the females. And generally we say donkeys are a certain inches in height rather than using hands, but Audie is 15 three hands. So he is 63 inches tall. And so he is a big, big guy. Um, his parents are both from show stock and they were bred by um, a couple here in North Carolina actually who had some great mules and donkeys that they used to show. Um, I'm going to show you today how I bridle a donkey because we want to be respectful of their ears and also respectful just like all equines of their teeth and their mouth. So I'll go ahead and take his bridle off. case he decides to leave. And then also put my reins over. And I have already taken his bridle and moved it to the longest hole so that he has enough room for his ears to come through the bridle. So I'll ask him to accept the bit. And with this I never force, I just wait even if I have to count to 10 they will eventually just kind of open their mouth for you and take the bit, but not on camera. They'll never do it on camera for you. <laughs> then I'm going to ask him to really take the bit up into his mouth. Fold the ear forward slightly. Hold the bridle out as much as you can to fold the ear slightly. Unlike horses where people can just move the ear and slide it back. At that point, I'll just make sure the bridle is adjusted and adjust it to the height that he needs for riding for his bit. Just, so he's wearing just a regular snaffle bit with a chain to keep the bit or a leather strap to keep the bit from pulling through his mouth just like you would on a, a young colt. Um, you can ride donkeys in any type of bit. Um, from a shank bit they can learn to neck rein, they can do all that kind of stuff. Where he is with his training we're still in a snaffle bit. Um, so Audie is, is our mammoth donkey and what I, we do a lot of trail riding with him, but really you can do about anything you want to with a donkey. Um, I take donkeys to the mountains um, and especially Leatherwood's one of my favorite places so they can ride anywhere that the horses can. There's actually people now um, at shows that are doing um, sorting with donkeys now <laughs> in classes and everything. There was a mammoth donkey um, that actually showed at the Western Dressage World Show last year in Oklahoma. And they can do everything from driving to jumping to dressage to everything. And um, I think you're gonna see, you have seen in the last 10 years or so, but more so, uh, donkeys becoming more versatile and more popular for people. Um, unlike most people like to hope, they do still spook but I think that they spook less and they don't overreact like a horse might if there's something really bad. So we generally say if they do spook, hang on and in 10 or 20 strides, they'll stop. So, <laughs> so for um, if you have a male donkey, you can breed it to another female donkey and you will get a donkey. And donkeys have 62 chromosomes in their chromosome ladder and horses have 64 chromosomes. So when you cross your mammoth donkey with a horse, you end up with your mule, and they actually are a true hybrid between the donkey species and the equine species, so you end up with 62 chromosomes, and that's why mules cannot reproduce themselves. There's another type of animal some people are familiar with called a hinny, and that is a female donkey with a male horse and it produces a henny, which is, seems to be more donkey-like than the mule. So. I'd like to invite everybody to bits some mule days this year. 
we've really changed up things. We're gonna have our mule show as usual. It's gonna be 36 events last all day long. And that night at rodeo, we're gonna have a street dance after rodeo. Also, all day Friday downtown, we'll have music for you. Saturday night at rodeo, we're gonna have another street dance. Sunday, we'll have a rock full rodeo for the family. Go look at our website and see what's going on at Benson Mule Days. Thank you, sir. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. So in preparation for him to side pass, I'm going to ask him to do a turn on the forehand and move his hind end off my leg. And then I'll encompass that with then some backing. And then also turn on the haunches. Which he's not doing right now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> we hit the right button. <laughs> yeah, you just got to ask and ask right with the right timing and the right feel and Ooh. And then here we have our side pass which he's still green at, so still learning. But it's just proof that donkeys can be light and soft and work off of just very light cues. Um, everybody thinks they really need to um, be jerked around and pulled hard and have a severe bit. Um, but really, he if you pull too hard to start with with them, um, that's really what makes them gets offend gets them offended and they lock down and then you really have a problem <laughs> as far as that goes um, but they they do all walk trot and canter under saddle and um, let me take him i'll ride him over the logs we've we've done quite a bit of trail riding with him so that's his main main thing <laughs> and most of these big donkeys, um, as you can see, when I pull and ask him to move, they're very, um, we like to use the term gumby, they're very bendy and, and fluid um, and don't, you know, they don't stiffen up and he seems to be able to bend in ways that um, horses can't, <laughs> that um, I'll have to show you something later with that. Saddle up, it's almost time for the fifth annual Cowboy Up celebration. Coming up September 15th through 17th at the Southeastern Agricultural Center in Lumberton, North Carolina. This year's events include trail challenges, barbecue cook-off, clinics, demos, and a draft horse pull. Hosted by Border Belt Horsemen's Association. For more information, go to our website, www.borderbelthorsemansassociation.org.
and walk. Yeah, there's actually about eight or nine different breeds of donkeys from Mediterranean to Ethiopian. Um, and then he's what we call American Mammoth Jackstock. And there's actually a, a totally se separate breed um, um, breed registry for that. So, Okay, um, Audi is registered, which always makes an animal worth a little bit more. He also, his mother was a show donkey who won a lot of world championships and then his father and grandfather were both stallions or jacks from Texas that also were really had a big show record and there's a lot of other donkeys that are out of the the name is rooster for that um, and plus his size and just the fact that he's quiet but light and responsive at the same time um, make him worth a lot more than the 500 donkey you see on $500 donkey you see on Craigslist so so a donkey this size eats probably as much as your average horse um, smaller the donkey gets generally their um, diet needs to be less and less and less so that they don't founder it's very important to keep donkeys from becoming overweight not only do their crests fall like uh, ponies <laughs> but they get something called fat pones you'll see big padded pones all over their body that's the medical term um, I feed all of mine a very high forage diet so grass hay and then I feed most of mine um, like for instance he gets some strategy grain and then um, also we feed him a ration balancer and that's an important ingredient. A lot of my mules and my donkeys are just on the ration balancer um, because it gives them all the vitamins and minerals and protein they need to, to have a healthy coat and grow healthy hooves, but it doesn't give them all the extra fat and calories that they don't need. Um, and you'll notice with his conformation, he has the bigger head and obviously the bigger ears donkeys generally will have a shorter neck although he has a pretty long neck for a donkey a lot of them are kind of u-necked and then with um, their back legs they they have a more upright leg they don't have as much angle to them as <coughs> um, a horse will but one of the main things to really understand about donkeys is they won't have the big round rump like your quarter horses and so some people might see this donkey initially and see the bones and say, oh my gosh, he's abused, he's neglected, he's not. But you have to look at the overall condition of the donkey because this is just his confirmation. And their muscle structure is um, a lot uh, elongated compared to horses, which is what makes them, I say, two to three times stronger than a horse. <laughs> so that's also where you're not seeing the big muscles that you would on a lot of other breeds of horses. If you're interested in a career working with horses, then Martin Community College is the place for you. MCC's Equine Technology Program is the only one offered among North Carolina's 58 community colleges. The program is management oriented with classes in breeding, nutrition, training, riding, equine health, and more. Graduates can leave MCC prepared to work in recreational and racing barns, breed to discipline oriented farms, or assistant farm management. For more information, contact Martin Community College today. The interesting things about mules and donkeys is the obvious things, their, their foot is a more U-shape rather than a round shape like a horse. And they also have higher angles. You need to match the angles on the leg just like you would a horse, but the angles on their legs are much taller as well. But the interesting thing and the reason why you need to take extra special care of donkey's feet is their hoof wall is twice as thick as a horse. And so they have a lot more issues and it's a lot easier for them to develop wetness in their foot and have that foot develop wetnesses and fungus and white line and abscesses and things like that. So a lot of my donkeys that I'm riding a whole lot, um, 
They will get shoes at least on front. If I go to the mountains, I put shoes on all four. Um, and then we do, um, farrier comes every six weeks. If you look at his hoof, like from the side, you can see that the actual angles of his, you know, you're supposed to match here to here, this angle on their foot. And it really does, yeah, you know, it's just, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they're very, um, very different. And they're just like, you could take a file and just file away on the outside of that foot because it's, it's like this That's thick. Amazing. It's, it's really amazing. A friend of mine, um, she's five, one or five, two, and she rides a 16, two hand perch cross. Wow. And so she started this thing that we all do. We say, she would climb up on a fence and she would say, come and get me. <laughs> and now That's we funny. all say that. All, everybody in the group says, come and get me. That's so cool. And they just get right in line because they like it too. They don't like us to, yeah. you know, dismount from or mount up, you know, from the ground either. Nice. So, mm -hmm. so let me just get this all straight here. So many ropes these days. <laughs> so I'm going to let you know, um, this is how I unbridle a mule or a donkey. And you again, want to respect their ears because you can see how sensitive his ears are. Just, he enjoys them being rubbed. So I'll, um, just basic unbridling, just like for a horse. Um, but I will again, make the, make the brow band and the crown piece larger, as large as I can. I will lift this up and fold his ears out as gently as I can and then hold the bridle and gently lower it so that he can drop it down himself and let go of it without banging his teeth. So they appreciate that. <laughs> Very nice. There we go. Very nice. God, you're wonderful. Isn't he cool? God, He's so just so wonderful. cool. I love you to pieces. He's a lot of fun. They're just, um... Now feel me and my baby, because I can keep this for me. <laughs> you got him, got her like that? <laughs> and they'll stand there all day for you to do that, too. <laughs> and then if you, and then if you do both ears, like you can take and do put that little spot on both ears. Oh, oh yeah. They'll put their head to the ground, some of them, for you. Which, that's pretty low for him, considering how tall he is. I've been riding mules and donkeys now for over 15 years and I've learned more horsemanship from them uh, than anything else um, because they really demand it of you. Um, they are wonderful partners, uh, friendly beyond, you know, your best dog. They're just friendly as they can be and so I really enjoy them and as you can tell I'm very passionate about them. And I encourage you if you're interested to uh, do some research and, and get a mule or a donkey to ride. Hey, my name is Daniel Rayner. Numerous time qualifier to the Southern Finals Rodeo, won team roughings across the country. I've used Mule City Feeds since I was a kid. Always great quality feed. And I use complete horse feed. It already has hay in it. If you're tired of chasing hay, then give Paul Dunn a call today at Mule City Feeds. I thank him for all the effort and time he puts into quality feed. With us this afternoon is Donna Campbell-Smith, and Donna is a, a very well-respected author in the equine industry. Donna's written several books about all kinds of, of mules and donkeys and draft horses. So we thought we'd talk to her a little bit today about her book on donkeys, since we're doing segments on donkeys. So Donna, tell me a little bit about your book and why you decided to write this one. Okay, well, it kind of, it was an uh, order of progression. I started out with miniature horses and thought, well, and I did the smallest, so I should do the biggest, and I did the draft horses, and then I met all these mule people who do some of the same things that draft horse people do, the, the, um, the pulling contest and the, you know, plow, plow days and all that. So then, you know, it just had to be donkeys next. So, um, so then we did the book of donkeys. And this handsome guy here with me is Audie Murphy, who happens to be on the cover boy of her book. So, Tell us a little bit about why you chose Aldi. Well, um, 
the publisher had picked out a picture of this really scruffy little donkey with Hang a dirty <laughs> halter and all this. And I told her, I told the editor, I said, we cannot use that on the cover. The people who read this book will be outraged. <laughs> so Shannon had introduced me to Audie, and I had already taken pictures of him, and I had one nice picture, and I sent it to him, and they said, okay, we'll use that one. So he got to be the cover boy. All right. And as you were going along writing your book, um, tell me some of the interesting stories. Maybe what was your favorite story that you discovered? Well, you can hold this the, I tell you the thing that I just learned to love about donkeys is how affectionate they are and how, you know, with horses, when they lean on you, the first thing you want to do is push them away. But it's kind of like a greeting and they lean on you. And if you try to push them away, they lean on you some more because they think you're saying I love you too. <laughs> and all. Uh, I was visiting a lady who raised miniature donkeys, and she had a pen full of mamas and babies. So I sat down on a bucket so that I could get down low enough to photograph the babies. And one of the mamas came over, and she was leaning on me. And next thing I knew, she was just kind of sitting in my lap. She just, like, <laughs> sat down on, in my lap, literally. So that was a lot of fun. So that's the thing, if I was uh, younger and richer, I'd have one Absolutely. or two. <laughs> Absolutely. Of all the things that you learned about donkeys, what's probably the most interesting fact that you uncovered? Ooh. Just, you know, their, their digestive is way different. You can't feed a donkey like you do a horse, in which um, is kind of scary because mm -hmm. people want to. And that was similar with uh, miniature horses. And they tend to have some real problems if you feed them lots of grain and that kind of stuff. So uh, that's one of the big management differences, I think, is, is feeding. Um, and Shannon has been a great resource. She's been like my consultant on the mules and the donkeys because they have, of course, some similarities, mm -hmm. but then in some differences because you got the horse genes in there with the mule. But um, huh, the donkeys are, you know, they just seem to be ha pretty much happy with whatever you do. The ones I have met, mm -hmm. which has really been the most fun about writing a book, is going out and meeting people to interview and photographing their animals. That's been a lot of fun. And all the people that I've talked to since I've been doing this in the magazine, I've never met anybody who didn't like donkeys and who was sorry that they had a donkey or had a bad experience with a donkey. Right. It's all been very positive feedback, and I can't say that about all of our equine <laughs> buddies, but the donkeys seem to hands down win the most congeniality. I think so. I think so. They just really seem to uh, like people and are affectionate. Definitely. Well, we call it affectionate. I don't know what they would call it if they could talk, but <laughs> <laughs> it might just be saying, take care of me, feed me. But right. They're a lot of fun. And did, did you get a chance to, to interview folks that had different kinds of different breeds? I, I don't remember how many breeds of donkeys there well, are. Well, they're, they're not really breeds or types. You've got the miniatures and the standards and the mammoths. Mm -hmm. You know, you start with the smallest, and then most of the ones you see probably are standards, and then the ones that, that are ideal for riding mm -hmm. or the mammoths. Um, there are some breeds like the like Poitou that's from France. Um, but especially in America, there's not many like purebred anything in right. the donkey world. Right. And of all the characters that, that you encountered with donkeys, um, is there any colorful people that come to mind that you want to colorful share a story? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's not. Not in the donkey well, world. Well, <laughs> Shannon is like the, like, you know, the goddess of donkeys and mules. For and, sure. For sure. <laughs> and uh, I probably would have taken twice as long to have written the books without her help. She introduced me to so many people and shared her knowledge with me and some of her photographs for mm -hmm. places that I couldn't get to. And... Um, of course, the Internet's been really nice because I've been able to interview people from other countries, you know, and, mm -hmm. and things. And I uh, didn't realize they were gated donkeys until right. I started working on the book. And uh, it just so happened that one of my close friends, who's a photographer, had taken a cruise to the Caribbean. And one of the islands there have um, wild donkeys, kind of like our Outer Banks horses. Right. And uh, they're gated. And she wow. had taken some pictures. So I was like, all right, she let me use her pictures. So, um so the resources were really great. And how can our viewers get a copy of your book? Well, they're all on Amazon. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way for them to get a copy. I'm show them the front again oh, so they can. Yep, I hold it backwards. <laughs> um, the publisher changed hands 
So the earlier books were in hard copy and then in paperback, and the new publisher redid all of them so they, they look like a set. You know, and they all have the same uh, style and, and the way that they're done. Mm -hmm. And are all your books available on Amazon? Yes. Okay, so yes. they could just enter Donna Campbell's so yes. and get the list. Yeah, they'll get the whole list. All right, sure well, enough. there you have it. Mm -hmm. If you need more information on your donkeys or your mules, Donna's books are a good resource. And we hope you enjoyed this segment. Hi, my name's Dr. Kim Crivett, owner of North Star Veterinary Hospital and North Star Stables. I'd like to introduce to you Robert Chase, my husband, who is the barn manager. And this is Jessica Fair my practice manager over at the clinic, North Star Veterinary Hospital, and also she has been studying equine science for over 17 years. So she is the one that I go to for when I need special legs being wrapped. So there are a few different reasons why you would want to wrap your horse's legs. If your horse may have a bowed tendon, which is when the tendon looks like a bow and arrow, and it would be swollen, or if maybe this leg is hurt and he's going to be standing more on this leg, we would want to do a support wrap. Uh, there are other things too that if we have maybe a splint bone that needs to be wrapped and it's um, healing from a fracture or we have just injected the tendons, etc. So Jessica is going to go through the basic wrapping. You always want to start away from the wound, so if we have a wound on the outside of the leg, she started her wrap on the inside, and you're going to go from the front to the back when you're on the outside. So front to back. And this is called a pillow wrap, which is thicker, so you have less chance of damaging the tendons and ligaments further. And then this next thing that she is putting on is called, I call it a track bandage. Some people call it a uh, standing wrap. And I like it because it's about 10 feet long and it stretches in all angles. And so she is getting it nice and firm. And with the fact that she has a polo wrap on, it's very thick and she is not going to uh, be able to do damage to the leg. This is also good information to have, let's say, if you're out trail riding and you need to wrap your horse's legs also. If there's a, if there's a cut or a wound or something like that. But horses' legs need to be wrapped because they will swell, and we are trying to decrease the swelling. And also, while they're healing from being injected or having other therapies done to them. So that is the proper way of wrapping a horse's leg.